The reason you're losing clients in your digital agency is probably not what you think. Hi, it's Damien Papworth here from Globatel. I'm coming to you from Australia. And at Globatel, we're here to help you design your digital agency to deliver. In this video, I'm going to take you through three critical tactics that you can implement into your digital agency that will ensure you retain more clients and retain them for longer. If you're a digital agency owner here on YouTube today looking for ideas on how to build a better digital agency, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to Globatel TV. We're here coming to you every single Monday with ideas just for that, building better digital agencies. In the comments also, I'd love to know one key takeaway from this video and what you're implementing straight away to make your agency better. Now to our video. About a year ago, we embarked on a customer experience management program, which has been successful enough that the Australian Marketing Institute, our industry body, has acknowledged this is one of the top three customer experience marketing campaigns running 2020. And from this campaign, I want to share with you three key elements, three key things that we learned, which are directly relatable to digital agency businesses and the reasons why digital agencies lose clients. And the reason why I want to share these three things with you is because you can implement change in your digital agency straight away to deal with them. And as a result, retain more customers and retain them for longer. So what are these three things? These three things are communication, their certainty and their commitment. So what does that mean? Firstly, communication. We tend not to communicate with our clients often enough. And when we do communicate with them, we tend to listen to what they're saying through our own perspective rather than trying to get to their perspective. So point number one is make more time. If you're waiting 48 hours or a week to turn around communication with your clients, even if you do the, I'll get back to you in 48 hours, that's not often enough. You have to be right on it, super fast, get back to people in a way that they recognize they're being listened to and you need to deal with their communication through their perspective understanding them, talk to them with, about their challenges, not about the way their challenges impact you. Number two is certainty. Certainty is aligning your brand promise with the things that you say which set expectations with your clients and then making sure that your fulfillment, that what you actually deliver, your outcomes are completely aligned with the expectations you set, which is completely aligned with your brand promise. And you do that through process management. And the third thing is commitment, commitment to the future. Your clients want to see that you're committed to ongoing improvement. And there's two areas of ongoing improvement. One is in the outcomes that you deliver. So what are the actual marketing outcomes you're delivering for them? And the second thing is in the way you go about your business. And the only way you're going to ongo like improve your business in an ongoing fashion in those two areas is by being genuinely open and listening to your clients, understanding what their needs are for the long-term benefit of their business. Okay, so communication, certainty, commitment. What are the tactics that we employ to fix these things in our business and how will that relate to your digital agency? Let's start with communication. Okay, so the thing that we did to solve the communication challenges in our business is we created a completely independent team in our business to 100% focus on customer support. So when I say independent, I mean these guys weren't part of the operation teams. They weren't part of the fulfillment teams or the project management teams or the delivery teams. They weren't part of sales. They weren't part of account management. They weren't part of management. Their one focus is dealing with customer support issues that came up. So this had two impacts. The first impact was it created immediacy. We have a, a customer support inquiry come through our business from any of the ways they come through and someone is on it straight away. So there's an immediate response that's a meaningful response. It's not an autoresponder response that says, I'll get to your issue in 48 hours. It's a response that tells our clients, we're here for you, you're important to us, let's deal with your problem straight away. The second thing it did is by removing customer support from all the other teams in business in our business is it gave the people doing the customer service and the customer support objectivity. There's no ego in the way they're problem solving their issues because you know they did the website, you know, or they're running the SEO campaign or they're chasing revenue figures. There's no there's completely objective, there's no ulterior motives going on in the problem solving that they're 
um, they're conducting. So what this tells our clients is, your problem is important for you, we're gonna solve it. Your problem is important to us, as well as you. We're gonna solve it though objectively through your perspective and your viewpoint to make sure we get the right outcome. So completely independent customer support solved 100% our challenges with communication with clients. Now, not every digital agency has the resources and the capacity maybe to do completely independent customer support away from all your other teams. So what can you do today if you don't have those resources to manage this better? I think the simple answer to this is, you have to put in your calendar a specific period of time, maybe every day, where all you do is customer support. And as you come, if you're like a single, a, a single operator, self-employed and you're the only person in the business, you know, you can still put time aside in your calendar just to manage this. And before you sit down, you have to really, you know, frame your mind and frame your, frame the, the hour or the 90 minutes you're gonna spend on customer support on seeing things from the customer's perspective. So you have to do a bit of mindfulness and an exercise there to shift from what you're focusing on and what's important to you in your business to shift to seeing things from your customer's perspective. So there's two extremes. One thing that we did was create that whole team that's independent from the rest of our business. You can create time in your schedule if you're a single operator, time in your schedule that is independently focused on the needs of your customers. You'll probably sit somewhere in between those two extremes. Try to work out the best scenario for you, but you have to give your customers this feeling that they're immediate, their needs are immediate to you and you see things from their perspective. So that's how we fix communication. I hope there's some good ideas for you there to implement in your agency. Let's go to the next one. All right, the next item is certainty. Now certainty, basically what certainty means is we want the expectations of our clients to match what they get. You know, I think about me personally when I'm disappointed or when I'm resentful or when I'm not feeling great, typically the one thing that covers all the scenarios in personal and professional life that make me feel not great is when an expectation hasn't met. Maybe that expectation is something I invented in my own mind. Maybe it was given to me by someone else. But having an expectation not met creates disappointment, creates resentment, creates negative feelings, and that's what you've got to overcome by creating certainty. So how did we do this? We created certainty in Globatel by creating a system of processes that we follow rigidly. So every single time we run a project, every single time we run a marketing campaign, we follow the same steps so that all our customers know exactly where each project's at and they also know what the outcome's gonna be at the end and if we're not hitting the, the desired outcomes, they know what the next steps with escalation are and all that type of thing. And how do we manage this? We, we manage it through um, ensuring that we have everything documented, we have our staff follow the documented processes, they're all on uh, software called Bitrix, which manages them on people's PCs, so the steps follow the, um, the process follows people in the office who are doing the processes, and it's all run by, um, by software. We have an internal team, once again, independent from our other teams, who are auditing processes and auditing projects to make sure that our staff are following the processes. And we also have independent consultants coming in outside our entire business who are doing supplementary audits, making sure there's complete objective audit of our processes with no emotional ties to anyone in our business to make sure we're getting, we're hitting the mark. So through that process, we end up getting a globally recognized quality assurance standard called ISO certification. Um, and what that means is that we have an external consultant come in saying, yes, you have processes, you're following your processes, you're doing the right thing, you have change management, and it's signed off by someone who's not part of the business with no vested interest in, in, in cheating. So what that means for your customers, what that meant for our customers is they know what to expect and they receive what they expect. And if they don't receive what they expect, there's a next step to make sure we can realign and, you know, and meet the expectation. Really, really simple. So once again, you know, ISO certification is kind of expensive. Um, you may not have the resources to do that. The really important thing is to create this framework where you're creating consistency in your business and that consistency aligns with the expectations of your clients uh, and also aligns with your brand promise. So that when people buy from you, 
and you, you'll generate a, re, um, a reputation that will enforce this. But when people buy from you, they know what they're getting and they get what they're getting. Super, super important. So that's the second thing, certainty. Okay, the final, the final C, the final element is commitment, a commitment to the future of your clients. So how do you do this? There's two areas that you really need to nail with letting your clients know that you've committed to their future in their business. And the first one is a commitment to improving your marketing outcomes, your deliverables, your fulfillment of services to their business. And then the second thing you need to nail is commitment to how you're doing business, to customer service, to strategy sessions, to communication, to relationship development, all those sort of softer skills. And the way we have approached improving the, this aspect of our business, creating a commitment to our clients' futures and creating a, like demonstrating this commitment, making our clients realize we're committed to them is by implementing a, a customer experience tool called Net Promoter Score, NPS. And what Net Promoter Score does is it gives our, our clients a direct feedback line to our teams, to our R&D teams and to our operations team where they can tell us exactly how they rate us and exactly where they can give us feedback on where they think isn't going right and they can give us feedback on what they think is going right and they can give us feedback on where they think we need to improve. And it's a rating system. So we get a score each month. We get a score each quarter and we get a rolling score each on a 12 month basis. And the way our clients score us gives us a target that we can try to improve on. Obviously, if we're getting bad scores, but good feedback, we can make change. And when we make change, as these surveys and net promoter score continue to go out, those changes should be reflected in our scores improving. And what we found over a 12 month period is we had a low score to start with and our initially our scores improved very, very rapidly as we improved some pretty big chunky things in our business. And then over time, it's, it gets harder and harder to improve your scores because you know the big chunks that people uh, are mainly annoyed about and are mainly causing frictions are all, all solved. So you don't have these big chunks and all of a sudden you have to tinker um, and finesse and you know, as you start tinkering and finessing, you're looking for different feedback. You know, what are they actually really looking for? And it gets a bit harder to improve. But the point is, as you tinker and finesse, that's when you get into your, your state of brilliance. That's when you clearly start outstepping all your competitors who, who are possibly still dealing with these big chunks of things that are causing friction and don't even know what they are. Um, so the real key with this is, what's the feedback loop? How are you getting this, this amazing intelligence from your customers feeding it into improvement in your business for the long-term relevance and the long-term brilliance and the long-term reputation of your business. And we found Net Promoter Score is an amazing way to do that. So Net Promoter Score, it, it is software. It is, um, you know, we have a full-time person managing this for us. You know, it is getting the right mix of, of, of surveys and understanding the, um, the data. So, you know, maybe that's not something that you have resources for if you've got a smaller agency also. But one thing you really, really need to consider if you don't have resources for something structured like that is how can you create this feedback loop from your existing clients to understand exactly what's annoying them, what's causing friction and where they want to go with your business. Um, if you create a feedback loop, you create some kind of system where at least every month you're getting this kind of intelligence, then you've got something to work with. Then you've got something that you can improve and implement in your business that not only will keep your clients a lot happier staying with you for longer, it'll also give you a pathway into long-term relevance in an industry that moves super fast. So there you go, the three key elements to our customer experience management campaign that we ran over 12 months that has us ranked in the top three campaigns of, of customer experience at the Australian Marketing Institute Marketing Excellence Awards. Really, really love to know what's one key one for you and what you can implement in your digital agency. Let us know in the in the comments or if you've got any questions. Now at Globatel, we also sponsor an amazing Facebook group called the Digital Marketing Dream Team. If you'd like to join us there, we have a, a, a range of digital agencies all collaborating and sharing insights into the industry and what's working, what's not, not working. Super, super helpful and impactful to a lot of us. So if you'd like to join our community, I'll put a link in the comments below and in the description. Um, you can go to Facebook and search Digital Marketing Dream Team if you'd like to find us. I'd love to see you there. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Globatel TV. There's a couple of videos here too, which you might find interesting. 
Um, really look forward to seeing you next Monday.